What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to episode 58 of the Madden 20 Connected Franchise Mode here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, our first episode to kick off the year 2020, and it's the second day of January, we're looking pretty 7-1, two very interesting matchups, we have a, you know, we had to view it as a very, very winnable game week 10 against the 3-5 and five Washington Redskins, and then a huge week 11 game First and second place in the NFC South, seven and one Bucks, five and three Atlanta Falcons. This is a big double header. We went from our expectations this season coming in, where I think we started as an 83 overall, maybe 82, and we're like, you know what? We like it's not bad. We brought in Derek Carr. We know how Derek Carr can excel in a John Gruden offense, and I would like to think that we came in thinking maybe we could squeak in the wild card, be that number two team in the south because you know you got the saints you're always contending with them the panthers are really good the falcons are all, like all these teams are pretty damn good when four and four is the lowest team and 500 is the lowest team in your division it's pretty much split between top and bottom but we did not think there was any way it would be seven and one maybe not no way that we thought it would be seven and one because you have john gruden the super winning head coach a team a guy that's been able to grow and develop the raiders organization to what it was I mean, there's a chance. We'll say like there's less than a 10% chance we'd be here at seven and one, especially playing on all Madden with that all Madden cheese every now and again, man. It is just so so frustrating. So I think we firmly have deserved this seven and one record. We got Derek Carr playing like a top, you know, first in yards, fourth in touchdowns. We'll say we'll take the median of that. He's playing like a like a you know two and a half quarterback if you're ranking the top five. He's somewhere in that two and a half range. So it's, uh, you know, every, everything has been very surprising. I would love to say we could win the Super Bowl this year, but there's still a lot of work that needs to get done before we can reach that point. But looking at base value, fairly even matchup here for game one against the Washington Redskins. Looking at their X factors, I mean, our team is stacked. There's no way of answer about the better. We have built this team into a legit contender, but you look at the Redskins, no X factors. But they have a couple familiar faces in Landon Collins and Darius Guy still doing the thing. Dylan Moses, the linebacker from Alabama, really, really talented sideline to sideline. They got Breven Jordan. So they went out with Jordan Reed, who in his prime was like, you know, an all pro tight end. They go and get one of the best tight end prospects I've ever seen out of Miami. And they got Nolan Smith, the linebacker from Georgia. So this is a, a team that's really, really good, has players on both sides of the ball. But generally speaking, we should feel confident heading into this matchup. Let's see if Derek I continue to play clean football, turnover free football, and we should be able to get to eight and one. Get off me. Big first down. Trey Sanders tackled by Montez Sweat. But that is a tone-setting run on this opening drive. Third and seven in the red zone like Chris Godwin a whole lot right now. No one's open. We're just going to throw it back across our body. The tight end Jake Ferguson makes the catch but doesn't fall backwards for the first down. Fourth and three will kick the field goal. On the board. Go tackle him short. It's been really, really boring back and forth. And it looks like we just held him to a field goal. No touchdowns in the first quarter. Just on our own 46. Going for it. It's goddamn Redskins. We can't. Oh my god. No, that's not good. That's terrible. Oh, Devin White coming on the blitz in the red zone. Defense needs to bail us out. That was our one big mulligan throw of the game. And if we can hold him to a field goal, that's a big win. It's wide open. Okay, we got punished. We got punished for our worst throw very early in 2020. Now it's time to just be lights out for the remainder of the game. All right, we're in to the red zone here. First and 10 on the 13. Trying. Man, oh, so the way. Our offensive line is playing terrible. Like, what? We can't run the ball. If we have, if, we, if, it, if our first read's not there, like, that's pretty much what happened on the interception. I knew all along we want Tony Pollard at the backfield. And our offensive line has been so bad. If I don't like have my predetermined first read, I can't even think of going off to my second option because I'm getting sacked because the pocket is collapsing. The offensive line is getting worked. But uh, we'll feed it in right there real quick to Godwin, make up the penalty yardage. And uh, let's see here. We got second 11. I would love OJ Howard to do something. I mean, he's really been the second go-to option. Oh, and we got him! He's been the second go-to option after Mike Evans this year. His contract is up in the air. We probably should re-extend him. We tie this game up at 10. He gets open. I think he was in uh, coverage against 
Dylan Moses, which he was, and uh, got himself open in the red zone. Wide open, great ball. Derek Carr ties this one up 10 apiece. Montez Sweat is insane. Unblockable. Montez Sweat is insane. Unblockable. Whoever that is. Literally, we have no pockets. Oh, they're so bad. How are we 7-1? and one? I Honestly, we're in the red zone. I have no idea what to call. Literally, no idea. We'll get, I mean, Tony Pollard out the backfield, maybe. Oh, okay. Dylan Moses, really good. Third and goal on the two. We got to go, go C4 special, right? Of course, Tony Pollard's not in there because I guess this is a power play, even though I argue it's more of a finesse play. But we get to the outside with Sanders. Come on! That's a corner. That's Landon Collins. There's no way Landon Collins. I mean, maybe he makes that. We've got to go for this. I, I simply cannot. Like, we can't settle for a field goal here. Get in the gun. Just give me something. We won't even go slants. Let's go Z under. Where's it's? Ah, oh, that's literally the last guy we want. Is Schwartz, but he's fast enough that he should be able to get across the line of scrimmage and get open here. Boom, between the defenders, and Anthony Schwartz does it. I don't know what route that was. Was it Slant's cheese? So I will take it on fourth down. Ice in the face, Derek Carr. Bucks go up 17-10. Oh, right there. Too easy. He's the speed back. You, re you ain't ready for it when you see Sanders back there. They think it's power. They don't, you just substitute frequently. Get Tony Pollard too explosive to not stack that box. When it's that light. He's got to make you miss. And even though he took a little bit of a hit there, still finds his way into the end zone. This game's pretty much over. And there's a victory. Ugly victory, but still a victory nonetheless. Redskins, that front seven was very, very good. Really kind of killed out our game plan. But still, 24-17, Derek Carr. 75% completion percentage. Two touchdowns and an interception on the day. 200 yards. We had 72 yards for Trey Sanders. Tony Pollard did have the touchdown. Six catches, 74 yards for Godwin. Six, six yards for Mike Evans, O.J. Howard, and Anthony Swartz. Both bringing in tutties for the Bucks. Uh, good performance. Defense, interception, bunting. We had 11 tackles from Devin White. A sack there. Two sacks for the rookie Wooden out of Stanford. And we have just got a big dub. I was paying attention to the ticker. The Falcons, we play next week. Lost to the Vegas Raiders, who had one win. So that is a Raiders helping us out here. Maybe they saw some... You know, some some emotional movie, and, and they were they were really sad about what happened with Gruden. They're like, hey, let's help him out. Let's beat the Falcons. So then this week, upcoming, it's even you know more of a let's put the Falcons away. Let's get them out of NFC South divisional contention. Let's put them out of their misery. So after a very game, Washington Redskins team week ten, we still got away with a victory, going to eight and one, top of the NFC South. Atlanta lost to the Raiders last week. Falling to 5-4, and four, really making that gap between us and everyone else that much bigger. I'm not going to say a victory here at home over Atlanta would, would make or break the division, but if we beat Atlanta and, say, Carolina and New Orleans lose again, I'm not going to say we're going to kick our feet up, but, you know, we might kick our feet up. So we got, we got the, you know, we, 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 we know the Falcons' familiar faces. A lot, of, a lot of, you know, they got Stephon Gilmore back there. That secondary is fairly dangerous. Deion Jones, Isaiah Oliver, Kayvon Thibodeau, Pat Fryermuth, DJ Ugalele, Paris John. They got, they got unreal draft picks. Like a five-star, five-star, five-star. Like, they're a really good team. They are a really good team. There's only one point that separates us. But, you know, we want to prove that we're the top dogs here in the NFC South. We were the whipping boys last year, this year. That yeah, means business. And we got a breakout player. And it's Wooden. The rookie out of Stanford. What does he need? 75 rushing yards and one TD. Or get him two, essentially, tax for loss or sacks. So a TFL and a sack. Okay. Hell yeah. I'd love to get that young player. What's he sitting on right now? Is he, isn't he he normal? He was like a 76 normal, 75 normal when we drafted him. 79 star. <laughs> He's a 79 star with an uh, with a chance to go up to a superstar dev trait as a rookie. 75 rushing yards? Who do they got as their running back here? Do they still have Freeman? They probably don't. 
How do they run the ball? They got Jamal. Oh, my God. We have got, I mean, they got Lynn J. Dixon out of Clemson. It was a burner. 97 acceleration. But Jamal Williams, the former uh, Green Bay Packer running back. If we can't shut him down, and they got Wooden, his probably brother here to West Georgia. Criminal background, if you go to that school. That's, that's, that's very, very reasonable for us to get him up to a superstar dev trade. So why not pretty much, you know, win the division essentially? I don't want to say that. That's too far because that could be quotes that we have to come back to five, six weeks from now after we lose a bunch in a row if Derek Carr gets hurt. Knock on wood. But I don't think we've actually had any, any major injuries yet this year, which is remarkable. But we can pretty much get in the driver's seat. For the NFC South and our best young player on the defense goes up to a superstar dev trait. Let's go. Oh, big time sack. Vita Vea, third and ten. Give me the ball. Like every play is that. Every play is like, all right, if I'm not trucking the other guy in the ninth dimension, or like everything's contested, everything's either dropped or gain a one or two. It's just a slow grinding game. And we throw it up to O.J. Howard who drops the ball. 2 of 7 for Carr. Hasn't been overly accurate, but you have got to catch the ball, O.J. Howard. There we go, Schwartz. He's fast. He's very fast. Up in the red zone. All right, worked last week. Went in the red zone. Target O.J. Howard. Oh, we get a lot of time. We don't go O.J. Howard, but we go Sanders, who's usually the power back. And he takes contact. Stephon Gilmore does not stand a chance against a man mountain like Trey Sanders. Opening, well not opening drive, but finally a score. Felt like it was the opening drive because the rest of the game has been, you know, I want to use that men in black mind eraser because it's been so bad and brutal. But uh, we finally get a score here in the second quarter and just knock the sense out of Stephon Gilmore. Hopefully enough so that Mike Evans can get open now. Oh, go juice. Go Juice! You're supposed to be an athletic freak tight end. He does enough. It's a big gainer. Oh, go Godwin. Go Godwin. How? Oh, we got a little bit of speed on him. Second and 14. Mike Evans has been shut down all game by Stephon Gilmore. Luckily enough, we have another legit wide receiver one on this squad. I look like that was Dion Jones in coverage against him. I mean, that's a bad mismatch, especially Godwin in the slot. Um, deflection! Bullshit! Yeah, baby. Yeah. There's one TFL for Wood and still in all the parameters get his X-Factor. Third and goal. Can we ding the bell? I'd love him to get his sack. He got his TFL. I'd love for this man to get his sack. So that we can get him. Oh. Oh. Oh, there we go. Brian Wooden gets a sack. Gets a TFL. There is going to be a new dev trait. And that is a superstar for our first round draft pick. What a pass rush. I think that's Jake Matthews, the right tackle. He kind of gets stuck up there on the guard. Lindstrom, another first round pick. But too much. To just, he's just overwhelming, an overwhelming edge rusher out of Stanford. And he brings down the gigantic Ugalele for a big sack and holds him to a field goal attempt. All right, this big 58 yarder. We got Jake Elliott out there. Ooh, should be good. I don't think we missed a kick all year. And it is right down the middle 17 6. Bucks lead in the fourth. Oh, he bounces the outside. Trey Sanders pretty much got to help ice this game up. We are now in the red zone. And Here we go. get ready for another score. Oh, great blocking. Untouched. Trey Sanders puts this one away. And there's a big dub. And not, not the flashiest performance. Those, we're getting to a, a phase right now with Derek Carr where he went from being the most accurate quarterback in the league to I can't remember the last time he hasn't thrown a pick. Even though one pick was bad in this game, one pick was a deflection, wasn't his fault. It still was two interceptions. A really good secondary. You know, really, really got Stephon Gilmore. Got some good, good playmakers back there. Pretty much took Mike Evans away for the entire of the game. But we can rely on the run. The run came up, came through today, and we win. A big, big NFC South Divisional victory. Derek Carr, 
Still fairly accurate, even with the two picks. 235 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, but it was a Trey Sanders. He gets the game ball. 137 yards, one touchdown on the day. Even Tony Pollard, limited touches, but 7.6 yards per carry. Pick it on an aggressive defense for the Falcons that want to get out to the quarterback and kind of abandon the run. O.J. Howard, five catches, 77 yards. We got 83 yards and a tutty for Godwin. Sanders also had a, uh, a receiving touchdown, giving him two on the day. Defensively, David Reese, eight tackles. We got two sacks from Vita Vea. Wooden, a TFL, and a sack. And I don't even think they got their rushing yard total that they wanted. They need 75. They, they didn't even get that. So, like, either way, across the board, uh, Wooden got himself, Brian Wooden out of Stanford, the rookie, from star to superstar, which is unreal. Back-to-back -back wins in this episode. Let's pop out, get him that dev trait, and get the hell out of here. As I stated, 2-0 in the episode, moving to 9-1. Next week, you got the Giants. You got the, the Bears for the next episode. Very, you know, at least at face value, Woonville games. But this is it. We get the big dub in the South. And Brian Wooden goes from star to superstar dev. 2,000 XP. Feels like it should be way more than that. But it is what it is. Um, I don't know what like archetype he's going to be. Probably a power rusher, if I had to guess. Looking at the stat. Oh, he's a speed rusher. Okay. So, I mean, he's, he's one step closer to becoming one of the best uh, edge defenders in the NFL. Secure tackler. Defenders the ability of increased success rate using server dive. I mean, whatever. I guess um, would be nice to get an unblockable force every now and again. But that is still a great upgrade for Wooden. As he is slowly becoming one of the stars of a defense that has, you know, <laughs> four superstar X-Factors and Murphy Bunding and Vita Vea. Uh, he welcomes himself into elite company on our 84 overall defense. So that is 2-0 in the episode. We've moved to 9-1 where we look at the south. You know, I, guess, I guess Carolina with the win there is trying to do something, trying to push us. But we got a three-game lead. We should feel fairly comfortable. The 4-6 and six Giants is a winnable game to kick off the next episode. Uh, well, we're feeling good. We're feeling good. We're looking good. How many picks does Derek Carr have? I'm just out of curiosity. Nine picks. You got to get 76% completion percent. We got to stop throwing picks, though. That, that is... I, I really would like to keep a guy under double digits. It's going to be unlikely with how much we're a little bit of a gunslinger. But uh, let's see. What else we got? We're, we're, we're at about what? the half, Just over halfway. Looks like Sanders should hit 1,000 yards. Double digit tutties. Uh, receiving Mike Evans well on his way to 1,000 yards. Godwin well on his way to 1,000 yards. Might have a chance with O.J. Howard. Defensively, Devin White's going to get a bunch of tackles. Eight sacks after the Jenks. He should get hit double digits. Vita Vea might hit double digits. Wooden, now that he got the dev trait, could hit double digits. We got four picks. Murphy bunting. That might be first in the league right now. We might have the number one ball hawking corner. He's tied. He's tied with Dante Jackson, Will Parks, David Log, and DJ Reed Jr. of the Detroit Lions. Um... All right, man, we're playing well. It's just, I guess, where does Derek Carr rank? Number one quarterback. He's the number one quarterback in the NFL. I mean, even when you look at the touchdowns to interceptions, you know, it's, I mean, obviously JT Daniels of the Saints, who we're going to see in a couple weeks, is playing fairly well. Uh, Wentz and Watson, but he's right in that mix, right? We're, he's playing some of the best football, arguably the best football of his career. And, uh, you know, I definitely think, for me personally, in that MVP conversation but that does it for today's episode guys hope you guys did enjoy hope you had a great start to your new year uh, as always your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button smash the like button if you enjoyed it until next time it's c4 saying peace out money i'm spending i'm out and i'm shopping you talking that shit when you talking and talking look at my options look at me dropping ass in the game like who are you stopping not me not me not never not me not me not never not me not me not never i'm way too clever Look at the 